So now in Tent No at Cha 2015, day five, I have with me on stage Tal Melamed. He's an application security expert with a long history in the field. He will probably tell you about in a minute. And he's going to talk about Bluetooth low energy key security issues. Please, please give a very warm welcome to Tal Melamed. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah, great. OK, um, so I'm Tal, um, application security expert. So um, in this talk, I'm going to explain about what is BLE, uh, where is the risk in all that, uh, where, I mean, where is the risk in having these uh, BLE uh, devices? We'll speak uh, in a second. Uh, I'm going to talk about some security, uh, key security aspects like the security manager, the BLE pairing, and the GUT. And then I'm going to dive into the application level of it and see how we can uh, man in the middle uh, Bluetooth devices and use it to uh, hack either the device or the mobile app that communicates with it. I've got some devices here. I hope. Uh, they will work uh, in real time. We'll see some cool tools that are available today for, uh, for the use, for the men in the middle. And we'll talk about some uh, possible counter countermeasures and what's next. So just a little about me. Uh, I'm Tal. I work at AppSec Labs. As the name says, we deal with uh, secure apps. Oh, we, our goal is to secure all the apps in the world. Uh, apps, I mean web applications, client desktop application, mobile application, and IoT. And this is part of the IoT uh, that I'm talking about. Um, about 12 uh, years in the field of information security, working at some uh, uh, companies, uh, security companies like Checkpoint and RSA and others. And um, part of what I'm doing is uh, developing security content for uh, training, for training purposes, whether it's uh, secure coding for developers, hacking for uh, hackers, um, and awareness for uh, who else uh, needs it. You can follow me at my personal website at my GitHub or through LinkedIn. Um, just about a word about AppSec Labs. We deal with all the, uh, all the industry vectors. Uh, we have clients from uh, biggest uh, organizations like Intel and Microsoft to uh, small startups where we work on uh, really cool, cool things like, uh, I don't know, uh, biometric logins and things like that. And you can see us at... Uh, in the past five years in all the Black Hat Vegas events and uh, OWASP events um, and other uh, cool hacking conferences like SHA, but this is the first time. Uh, okay, so uh, let's start with what is BLE. I'll just mention BLE, BLE, but what is it really? So BLE is uh, an abbreviation for Bluetooth Low Energy. It's the successor of uh, the normal Bluetooth that we all uh, heard of. Uh, it's called also Bluetooth Smart. It's part of the Bluetooth 4 specifications. And it's designed to be power efficient. Uh, it's smaller, much easier to implement. And uh, it, uh, it's supposed to, to last longer. So why did the Bluetooth come with the BLE? Because as we can see today, we got IOTs everywhere. Uh, IOTs, uh, I mean, in uh, every aspect, uh, houses, wearables, etc., uh, medical, everything. So there was a need for a protocol that can support the the scale, this uh, type of scale, which will be cost-effective and efficient and uh, um, will last long. So by uh, 2021, uh, there's supposed to be, according to Gartner or something, uh, 48 billion IoT devices. Uh, and uh, they estimated them a uh, th uh, third of all the devices would be based on Bluetooth. So we've got a wide range of devices to hack and secure. 
Uh, what, where is the difference between the BLE and the Bluetooth Classic? So they are different, completely different. They talk on the same spectrum, uh, 2.5 gigahertz, but they have different as architecture. Uh, the BLE is working uh, in a uh, master-slave kind of uh, mode. We'll see it. Um, they have different module parameters, channels. The format of the packets are totally different. And uh, on top of that, they cannot communicate with each other. So it's not uh, that uh, BLE devices support also communication with BT, uh, the Bluetooth Classic. Nope, you have to buy new ones. Uh, and will, if you have them, uh, you probably have to buy new ones soon after you hear this talk. Um, OK, so I told you why, why the change. So uh, good power consumption and cost. It's very cheap. Um, you can look on um, AliExpress or whatever and find locks uh, and chips and everything, uh, Bluetoothy that costs I don't know, five from uh, 10 cents to $100. So where the risk in all of that? So of course in the industry, if we go to the most, uh, maybe one of the most important ones uh, for uh, medical industry. So also uh, they already uh, managed to hack some uh, medical equipment like di uh, diabetic uh, uh, insulin pumps. So you can imagine what they can do. Uh, if we go to our own lives, uh, we can see it now everywhere, so there's a thermometer, uh, insulin pump that attached to your body. Uh, if you can just uh, pump someone from remote, that could be dangerous. Uh, we've got uh, everywhere, this is now the, the most common thing you can find online, is the Bluetooth devices locks. I've got one here. I hope it, it will work. Sometimes they don't work that well especially if you buy them from AliExpress. Um, so we've got all these locks, and they're all very secure because they're locks, they're physical, not only uh, technical, uh, not uh, technological, but after all, also B Bluetooth have the software layer upon, uh, above it, and uh, this is what, where we come, and uh, we see that they are not so tough after all. Of course, open uh, watch and other gadgets to open your door, your garage door, your home door. You don't have to talk about sound. And the most part, uh, we have also inhalers, um, medical inhalers, uh, that uh, also are smart today. Someone has to be smart if they're using it. Um, so let's talk. Uh, shortly about the architecture. What, how does it work? So three layers, we can sum it that. Uh, that way we have the controller layer where the um, physical uh, engineering stuff, the radio control, connection linking, I'm not a hardware guy, uh, uh, radio testing, and of course the interface for the host. So the interface is how uh, the components are going to talk with the physical layers and on the host we have the uh, it sits on top of the radio and it provides API to the application we have some components there like the security manager and other uh, components that we're going to uh, shortly discuss soon and we've got the app layer where this is where the app come uh, so the interface to the host, and they communicate with BLE components, um, scanning, pairing, uh, encrypting, hopefully, and uh, <coughs> other things that Bluetooth devices can do, music, camera, etc. So the security manager, part of the host, uh, con part of the architecture, it has three main uh, uh, goals. It, it is doing the. It is in charge of the pairing feature, exchange, uh, the short key, uh, term key generation, and uh, key distribution. It has built-in uh, some built-in uh, security functions, and uh, for example, AS uh, 128. Sorry. <coughs> and uh, 
it is it uses uh, um, a key exchange uh, for transferring keys between the device and the client. The client could be a mobile app or another device or some hardware, or etc. And uh, they uh, it uses asymmetric key, the asymmetric key model where they have a private key and public key. So it sounds a little secure. Is it really secure? So the problem comes uh, in the pairing. The most uh, the, the the problem that reveals uh, the apps for uh, for this uh, expose the apps for that risks for the risks. So we've got the pairing. Uh, we said the pairing. Uh, the pairing is made between the smart device to the mobile app or some other app uh, in order to encrypt their communication link between them so they can speak privately and no one else will be able to listen. Uh, the key uh, can be used also to uh, sign and verify data, uh, random address resolution, and some other parts that uh, Bluetooth provides. Uh, the, um, the, pair, the pairing process is a three-phase process. Uh, first of all, the device. So now I'm going to say device. I'm going to use this uh, smart bracelet. You can't see from behind, just believe me. Um, and then the uh, other one will be, one second, okay, the Apple show uh, the screen of the app, uh, of the mobile phone on the screen uh, soon. So they are going to communicate with each other and while uh, the pairing, they exchange the pairing feature um, possibilities because some devices, and this is the, the next slide, I'm going to talk about the three types of pairing they have. So after, after they, uh, uh, they changed their uh, pairing feature, uh, features, they go with the chosen one, and then uh, the device or the app, one of them, uh, generates a key. Uh, if we're talking about uh, Bluetooth 4, 4.0, it's going to be the legacy pairing, which is the same pairing that was in the Bluetooth Classic. And from 4.1 to Bluetooth 5, they're, going to, uh, they're using uh, secure connections. This is, it's, uh, it's called that way. Uh, and they're using long-term key. This is a m much more secure uh, key exchange or key generation. And then they transport the keys between them so they can encrypt the link. So. Pairing, uh, we have three types of pairing, uh, which is really how do the device determine how to create the key. So we have the first, uh, most common one, legacy one, just works. This is, uh, this is its name, they branded it, just works. Uh, when you uh, go and check why it just works, then you f find out that the key is zero, so uh, of course, it just works. Uh, I could do it myself. <laughs> uh, the other way uh, method is the six-digit pin. Could be also four-digit pin, uh, I think. Uh, anyway, if your device have a screen, and only then because you have to see the pin, uh, then sometimes if both of the devices communicate has this uh, the six-pin digit then you can, uh, one device can display a pin, serial, I don't know, a pin number, and then you have to manually click it on the other device, type it on the other device. So this is going to generate the key, uh, the temporary key, so they can communicate with each other. Okay, six digits, uh, one million options. We can brute force it, of course. I'm not going to show how I'm going to brute force it. It's already uh, shown by Mike Ryan uh, on Black Hat, I think. Um, you can see uh, his uh, great uh, presentation uh, on Black Hat. And he shows how all the uh, Bluetooth pairing model is not so good. Um, it's not working really secure. And uh, the other option, the third one, is out of band. Out of band means they are the devices that communicate with each other. They 
transfer the key on a different protocol, different uh, uh, spectrum, uh, but uh, supposed to be secure because the key is going over a different channel, so no one's listening it, to it, hopefully, um, like NFC or something like that. So for that to work, uh, both devices have to support this. Um, new uh, smartphones maybe support NFC, but most Bluetooth devices doesn't support NFC because they are Bluetooth devices. So um, I actually haven't seen one that's using it. Uh, hopefully they're not just saying that, but there are some uh, ways to do that. So, um, Bluetooth says none of the pairing methods provide protection against passive eavesdropper. Great, thank you for letting us know. Uh, you could come up with something that does protect against uh, a passive eavesdropper, uh, but, oh, sorry, don't worry, because the next version will support electric curve and DFE Hellman for key exchange. Okay, great. That's really great. They understood the problem, that, but uh, the problem for me is that I already bought the devices, so my devices are using BT, uh, Bluetooth, BLE 4.0, so they are not secure. So from all that, I didn't understand, are they secure or not secure? So in practice, uh, we test a lot of uh, IoT devices, BLE devices, and at least 80% or about 80% of the smart devices doesn't use the cryptographic uh, possibilities of the, of the protocol and they just work. Uh, and they don't use the encryption, they don't use the verification and uh, they let the app handle everything. So, but the problem is that the app uh, mobile app cannot control everything because the app doesn't have um, control over the operation level or let's say the device. So if it's a mobile device, the app usually cannot control the Bluetooth features of the, uh, of the device because it, it, in, is it is installed on an, a device, a random device. Uh, so as I said, they're not really secure. Why? I don't have to tell you why things are not secure, uh, because probably the m most uh, common answer is because it's easier to do it that way. Um, okay, so uh, the next, next part of the Bluetooth, uh, the BLE that we'll talk about, is the most important for me, uh, is the GUT. A generic attribute profile, uh, this is like a, ske a scheme used to communicate between BLE devices, like so they know what to expect. Uh, build on top of the uh, attribute protocol uh, server, uh, the GUT server, which is one device, uh, stores data uh, receiving from other uh, devices, and then it uses it to communicate with the device. I'll show you how it works. And uh, they organize it, this, this scheme will organize ob data and objects in profiles, characters, uh, characteristics, and services. So it's going to be something like, work, look something like that. I have a service, let's say it has a heart monitor. Uh, so how does the app that communicates with it know that uh, it has a heart monitor? So it tells there is this uh, GUT profiling, and it tells the mobile app or everyone that wants to listen, uh, okay, I've got this service, it's a heart rate, uh, this is the name, it's Cryptor, uh, this is the property, you can write to it, read to it, or notify. Notify is like registering and receiving constant data. Um, you can, uh, in the, the architecture is had, or the developers needed to decide whether you can do uh, act on this service, read this service, or write to it, uh, authenticated or not, and etc. Uh, other services line up. So, what is the typical flow? Uh, the typical flow for communication between the mobile app and the smart device. So, this is the smart device. Now, I want to pair my mobile app to it. So, usually, just 
I turn it on, and then it just advertises itself. Hi, I'm a Bluetooth device. Someone wants to connect to me. Uh, these are my services and characteristics, and you can uh, connect to me. Then uh, on the mobile app, to connect, to communicate with it, I will start by some app or using the, the uh, built-in feature of the mobile app to scan for BLE devices. You'll start seeing uh, BLE devices in the range. Um, once you select an advertise, the application will try to start reading all the services and characteristics and build uh, your uh, profile on the mobile oh, on the BLE device uh, with what it can operate on. Um, communication is determined. I mean, the device is identified according to its MAC address. So if you have the same device with different MAC addresses, this is how they're going to determine which device is it, which is cool because then we have MAC spoofing. And uh, after they are paired, they have, uh, this, they have a, an encrypted link, and then they can start communicating with each other. But maybe this is a little uh, complicated. Let me simplify uh, how it looks. So this is a BLD device. I am a BLE device, and this is me. Uh, thank you uh, for showing me all your services and uh, whatever I can do. So uh, at this point, uh, I have I, I told you that the device is just publishing, advertising itself. So at this point, what I do, uh, just to start looking around, I uh, download uh, a BLE scanner randomly from, uh, from App Store or Play Store. And uh, then I can start uh, scan for services, uh, for uh, BLE devices. I don't need any special app or anything for it. I download BLE scanner, click on scan. I see all the scan, uh, all the BLE devices, and then I can connect to, to them. Some of them might need, require some further authentication. We'll discuss that. And then I can see something like this, uh, all the device information, attributes, and services. And I can start reading them or calling them. So I can just uh, connect to one of your devices. And probably they have, this is very common, uh, just to see uh, the battery level. So I'm going to see, is there a battery level here? Uh, some, I can read the specification of the device, and it will tell me uh, the battery level of the, of the device. Uh, you can see there are all these uh, UU, UUIDs there. Uh, what are they? What are they doing? I don't know, but it's uh, a specification name. So you can take this name, because you don't know what all these uh, services. Oh, here you can see battery service. So what are all these custom services and generic attributes? Well, you don't know what they do. So you just copy this number, and then you Google it, or you go into Bluetooth, and then you have all the specification. OK, if you see the XXX as uh, 1811, then this is alert notification service. So you know what it is used for. And this is how you can learn uh, about the, the device services. So now, uh, let's see if, if it works. Great. OK, so I'm going to launch the Billy scanner. Yeah, OK. So now I'm going to scan. Don't know whose blank is, someone around here. Let's see if I can try. That. OK, so I've got this eye tag. It's a simple BLE device where you can put on your dog or your wallet or something. And then you can track it. OK, so you'd think you have a designated app that only this app knows. So you need to, to put in a serial number or something like that. And then you can, you're the only one that can use it. But no, I can just scan it, uh, BLE. So I'm coming, I hope. Uh, so I hope to find some BLE device. I'll connect to it. Uh, sorry, you can't see this. So this is not helping. 
I'm talking. Okay. So you don't you don't know what I'm talking about. Okay. So this is my uh, mobile. Okay. And then uh, I'm scanning for devices for BLE devices. Hopefully to find my uh, my device. Let's see if I can find it. You can see the numbers uh, telling you how far is it from the device. The, the, the problem with BLE that they are not working that good anyway, uh, especially those you buy at AliExpress. Okay, I don't know, maybe it's some, I'm not going to do anything. So I'm just clicking on the device, it tries to connect, not sure if it's going to uh, connect to it, and then I'm going to see all the services. Okay. Okay, there it is. So I can, I'm connecting to uh, f to this iTag. It's as I told you, it's a general application, BLE scanning. Let's hope that it works. Now it tries to read all the services that the that the device is providing. Never mind. Let's go on. I'll show you better stuff. Uh, Okay, let's go on. So anyway, I can connect to most of the devices and then uh, start studying them uh, over Google or over Bluetooth. Uh, and the problem is that most devices do not apply any authentication to their services. So you can just register to or write to any device that you can find uh, and scan. Um, Okay, so let's talk about man in the middle. So this is how a normal man in the middle would work, right? We have the mobile app and the Bluetooth device, and then we come in the middle. This is uh, man in the middle. So this is not going to work on Bluetooth because uh, Bluetooth can only op do one Bluetooth thingy. So uh, if it advertises itself, it cannot connect to a, a device and vice versa. So um, I have a BLE adapter or an app, and I want to connect to the Bluetooth device, but then I will not be able also to connect to the mobile app because I can do only one thing. Um, so for that, I have to have uh, a different architecture for uh, in the middle. So this is something like how it's going to work. Uh, I have two uh, BLE adapters. They are here. You can't see them. I don't want to disconnect them. I'll show you in a second. Uh, one will connect to the mobile app. The other one will connect to the Bluetooth device. And then they just have to uh, communicate with each other. Um, I will use a different uh, protocol because the Bluetooth um, uh, possibilities are over for me, so I'm going to, to show you tools or how you can do it over WebSocket. Uh, so the components are uh, connected to the BLE devices and they communicate with each other over WebSocket. Uh, this is how we create them in the middle. So how do we start this? doing this? So we, we buy, I love AliExpress, yes, um, we buy two dongles, uh, CSR 4.0, these are Bluetooth uh, BLE adapters, and one will work as the master, and one will work as the slave. You can buy them at $270, um, including shipping, so that's not a problem. And then um, what I'll do is I'll download uh, Kali Linux VM or any other VM that you like, and I will connect one to this virtual machine and the other to the 
other virtual machine. Now I have two machines. Everyone has its own dongle, and they will be used one to connect to the mobile app, and one will connect to the, the smart device. Um, so after I did that, there are some uh, basic commands that you need to know or to work on uh, the, the machine to see that th you are connected. So HCI config uh, is uh, to see the interfaces of the uh, BLE. So you see the address they have, the MAC address, and if they are running or not, you can, uh, you can use uh, HCI config, HCI, the interface, and then up, down to start and uh, close it. HCI tool is a another tool that lets you scan for uh, BLE devices. So you just type HCI tool LE scan and you start seeing devices. Sorry. We have got we have got tool, another tool command line. Uh, they are coming with the uh, libraries that you need to install. Um, uh, got tool uh, you can read characteristics from a device after you connect to it. So got tool and the MAC address of the device to communicate to connect to it, and then uh, you can read and write to it uh, from the command line. And we have some cool uh, tools that already uh, implemented everything, so we don't uh, need to do it uh, ourselves. So the first uh, great tool is Gattacker. Uh, uh, and these tools lets you or gives you the ability to, to use the architecture that I discussed earlier. Um, um, when you communicate over WebSocket, so now I'm going uh, to show you how I'm going to how I'm using it uh, this tool in order to uh, see or do man in the middle between the mobile device and the smart uh, device, the smart uh, BLE device. And uh, as part of that, I'm going to show you how you can use uh, tools like pro uh, Burp. Don't know if you're familiar with Burp is uh, uh, my best friend as an application security expert. It helps you. It's a proxy tool that lets you um, see uh, intercept the, in the the communication over HTTP and HTTPS and uh, WebSockets. So let's see how that looks. Okay, so I showed you I uh, connect one uh, device, uh, one uh, VM to uh, the BLE adapter, uh, the other way around. I connect one adapter to the uh, virtual machine. Just checking that it works. Yeah, you can see I can uh, scan for devices. And then on the other, I'm going to connect the other adapter. Then uh, I need to, if I have more than one interface for uh, BLE, then I need to specify which of the interfaces I'm going to use. Sorry, uh, one second. So here I'm going to tell him uh, where is the slave, what is the IP of the slave machine. So they, they will know how to communicate with each other over WebSocket. Then I'm just going to start the slave on one VM and start scanning on the other uh, virtual machine. Here you can see on the bottom uh, virtual machine, you can see all the services uh, or the GUT profiles that it collected. You can see some devices, uh, PowerWatch Plus, LockS, and here some other device, AMI, YJ. Um, the, the master device stores all these characteristics and got profiles on the, uh, on the disk, so I can use them. So now, this is how I'm going to use uh, to do the man in the middle. I'm going to do, uh, this is the file that the scan stored. So I'm going to advertise myself. So I'm going to connect to the mobile device. And then, because I know all its characteristics and uh, profiles, I will pretend to be it, so I will just advertise them uh, myself 
certificate. I already connected to the device, so it cannot uh, advertise anymore because it already paired. So if you, for example, pair a device to your app, uh, then you scan again from a different device, you will not be able to see the, the, the smart device because it is already paired. So it does not advertise anymore. So um, I'm just going to advertise it uh, and wait for the, the other, the app to, com to connect to it. So of course, um, if I'm using a different MAC address and the user already con uh, paired once before to the device, then it will see a different device if, it, if he, will, he or she will notice, because it depends on the app, how it presents it. Uh, but, of course, there is a possibility to Mac spoof your, uh, to, to spoof your MAC address so they will automatically uh, communicate. So this is the device. Sorry, one second. Slower. This is the device. I'm going to start the power sensor up. This is a designated app to communicate with this port bracelet. And then I will scan for device. Now I see the power watch. But this power watch is not the actual power watch. It's, it's the one that I copied, cloned, and then uh, advertised myself. So in a second, you will be able to see here on the upper VM all the traffic that goes between the mobile, uh, the smart device to the mobile app. And uh, here you, you will see it as hexed uh, values. So this app has a feature of uh, sport activities. So I can count uh, jumping ropes. Oh, uh, so I will not jump now, but when I recorded it, I had to flip this thing in the air. So I'm just ga going to count it. And you can see that in some hacks uh, version, I, w I can see the, the data coming from the device to the mobile app. So this is just passive, right? I can only see this. Uh, but there are two other, you can see also here the watch, small. Um, there are other ways to, uh, to do the uh, active man in the middle. One is by hooking to a service or using a real-time modification. So now I pre-hooked uh, a service, so what it will do, it will just uh, uh, raise up, the increase the numbers. So I can, you can see here that I did the treadmill hook. All it does is um, locating this, uh, sorry, one second, locating this uh, notification event according to its characteristics. I know it starts with uh, 9, 7, something, something. And then I will replace this string with this hex, hex string. And what will happen is that the next time I can really show off uh, of my hard work. So I'm going to do the same with, this, with the hook. OK, so I'm adding the, the smart device, the BLE device. Now I'm going to do the uh, treadmill. And then when I'll start, uh, you can see the hook that uh, I just did. So I'm now going to do a lot of sport. And I can really show off of my uh, hard, yeah, thank you, uh, running. Not so tiring, though. Um, so you can see it keeps on counting. I can do, of course, whatever. Now I can sh I'm showing you uh, how you, you can manipulate numbers, but of course it can be uh, other uh, severe things. Okay, so now I'm adding Burp. Burp, as I mentioned, is a proxy tool, uh, a great tool that helps you uh, man in the middle, WebSockets and HTTPS. So this is WebSocket, so I'm going to use the same. Uh, I'll just let tell Burp to listen to the right port and interface, and then I'm going to do the same. Uh, 
and then you can see all the traffic already in Burp. Um, Burp has the ability to, to do on-the-fly manipulation. So this time I'm going to do sit-ups and then you can see all the data transfer through Burp. I don't have to do anything myself. I can intercept, let me run it further. I can intercept the request, just modify it, and then hit the forward, and then I will do a lot of push-ups. You can't see my, uh, my squares here, uh, but uh, because it's on the fly, then the next request will, uh, will tell it uh, um, on 11, not on 3 million. Okay, uh, so this is why we do the hooks, so it will permanently work. Okay, so this is thanks to Gattaker. Um, okay, uh, the other tool is Beetlejuice. Uh, another man in the middle framework also has a web interface, really cool tool. Uh, gives you also the ability to reply uh, with, through the interface. So the Gattaker tool now has also the ability to reply, but you need to dump. Uh, a request and then replay it. Here you have the uh, reply feature on the web interface. Um, so I'll, I'll try to do a, a live demo. It's going to be nicer. Uh, okay, one second. Okay, so can you see my screen? Great. So, Beetlejuice proxy on one, uh, already the Beetlejuice uh, master on the other. You can see that they are connected. I'll put the mobile up here. Okay, so now I can browse to the Beetlejuice interface. Sorry, let's just do it like this. Here I can select the uh, target device. So, I'm going to connect to my Power Watch. Now what happens is that it tries to read all the services and characteristics. Come on. Okay, connected. Um, so now I'm going to use the same app that I showed you before, the power sensor. And device, great. So I think they're already connected because the same uh, MAC address. Yeah, okay, so now uh, the cool feature is you, you cannot see that, but from this wristband uh, bracelet, I can, you can look here in a second. I can take pictures. Okay, so uh, let's see if it works. Yeah, hi. So, one second. There you go. You saw it? Great. So, I took a picture. Now I have the request on this, uh, I think. It's this one, so I'm going just going to replay it. One second. Okay. All right. Oh. Let's, let's do this. So you can see them together. So here you can see. I can take pictures from my computer now. Yeah. Uh, let's take one picture of you. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, you want some? Yeah, okay, so it's going to be tough. And three, two, one. Great, sorry guys, uh, yeah, this is not, uh, okay, so one cool thing and the other one is even nicer uh, because what you can't see but I'm closing the app, so it's closed, right? Um, but now I can also, and let's hope it works. Uh, 
Um, okay, great. So it's on mute. Okay, can you hear it? So I can also switch songs. Yeah, disconnected. One second. So as I told you, uh, the, the only thing problem with BLE is that it gets disconnected. Uh, OK, again, I'm connected. Let's try again. OK, yeah. So we got some other songs. And then our victim goes to sleep or to a meeting, and but we just got this. Uh, let's even do this. Yeah. So I'm going to a meeting. Uh, my phone is locked or something. And then someone who sits nearby, because you have to have the proximity, uh, just recorded the request and then starts it in the middle of the, of the meeting. Uh, so it's really cool. Thank you. OK, so we could use the mobile device to hack into the mobile app, sorry, the smart device to hack into the mobile device. We bypassed the app uh, because the app has permissions on the device to start the music, to start the, to take pictures and whatnot. So we are using the BLE layer to target the mobile app to hack into the uh, device. So we already showed the demo. Uh, Okay, um, last words. Um, so I applied for another uh, conference, different conference, totally different. They ha even have cocktails and galas. Uh, but the problem was that uh, you had to submit a paper. And if you had over six pages, then it would cost you $1,010 for each page. Really, uh, so... What I did, uh, so they have gallows and need, but really, guys, you must do the math first. Uh, I just put the minus nine. I have minus nine pages, so. Uh, thanks. Got a free ticket, yeah. Also to a gala, didn't go. Uh, okay. So um, we saw that we, can, uh, we cannot protect uh, BLE 4.0 because it's in the device. So what we can do is if we're building apps is to put some security uh, into the app. As a security application security uh, person, uh, we have some uh, rules of thumb, of course. Uh, do not rely on what's coming from the user. Duh. Um, and force access control. So if you're going to now start downloading the scanner app and scan each other devices uh, on you, yeah. Um, if the, the app is smart enough, then it will require an access control to access some services. Uh, also do input validation. And uh, there is uh, some features that can be done using uh, the BLE technique or uh, exposing the BLE pairing uh, model just uh, in a secure, more secure way is that, for example, in order to uh, pair to a device, you first need to click it physically, click it for, uh, I don't know, three seconds, and then you have five seconds to pair. So it adds uh, more security. Of course, the app should uh, properly warn you if you're uh, using a different Mac, if you're, it comes across a the same device with a different Mac address. And do not rely on the, on the BLE, uh, encrypt, sign, verify data in transit. 
uh, I must say thank uh, especially uh, Slavomir uh, for his tool Gattaker. He also uh, contributed uh, um, to this uh, to the start initial of the research. Uh, also thanks to, to Damian and Mike. Uh, you can see their great tools and talks. Uh, Hacklu and uh, Black Hat, and uh, I'm going to discuss further this, uh, or past discuss this uh, talk in other conferences. You can see. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Bluetooth is vulnerable against eavesdrops, uh, but hopefully, uh, if we're going to uh, get uh, the next versions of Bluetooth uh, BLE devices, they are going to be 4.2. Uh, or five, which are now uh, really immersing, uh, they are much more secure so because they use known uh, encryption crypto libraries and algorithms, and they didn't not uh, decided by themselves how to uh, create new ones, uh, and use the also the application uh, side. Uh, thank you very much for coming and for staying the la for the last way. Uh, you can contact me. Thanks. Thank you. You can contact me at uh, this email if you want. Questions? Thank you very much, Tal. If you have any questions, please line up at the microphones. As it, is already, as it has already started training, stay inside, ask a few questions. Come on. <laughs> up to the microphones. Yeah, first one. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Uh, you showed an attack uh, with this bracelet you were showing, and I was curious whether there was no pairing involved at all, or if you could like replay values that were somehow encrypted. Uh, not sure I understood the question. You're uh, you're asking if it, I had to pair it with a pin or something. Right. No. So just works. It's uh, because it's a very really shitty device, right? Yeah, but most of the devices, most of them, I mean, maybe the most new ones will not be, but uh, most of the, the devices that you get, well, you'll just pair to them and go. So, uh, but when you pair, right, yeah. there, isn't there some kind of encryption going on on the Yeah, yeah, there channel? is an encryption, and uh, I told you uh, at the beginning also uh, asymmetric key uh, and key exchange, uh, but... Uh, the problem is that uh, when I do the FMN in the middle, I first connect myself to the device, so it doesn't really matter. I'm not showing how you can hack uh, a BLE communication link, although it's possible, already showed by Mike Ryan. Uh, he also has a tool for it. Uh, you can download it from luxter.net, uh, where you can actually brute force uh, a paired uh, communication or jam an already paired uh, communication in order to establish a new one and then hack into it. Uh, but I uh, just I wanted to show you the application level, uh, the application side of it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next question, please. Uh, more comment. Um, one thing also the devices shouldn't do is sending out data that you already can use. Uh, Fitbit is known for sending out how many uh, steps you take always. So you get the name of the device and how many steps you take on that day without any interaction with the device other than scanning. Yeah. Um, no, not sure I understood the question. It's more what's going wrong with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just so uh, you get all the information without even asking. Of yeah. So as I showed you, the the problem is that uh, today the Bluetooth just tells you, uh, "Hello, I'm a Bluetooth. Uh, this is what I can do. Just use it free. Uh, connect to it." And though you think that uh, you can think that these there is an an um, I don't know, a designated app that only it can uh, work with the with the device. So this is not true. I could do all all of these uh, from uh, a normal scanner, BLE scanner, generic one. I'll just need to know uh, the exact uh, packets to send or data to send to it, or to read from how to read to it from it. Yeah. Um, Next question, please. Hi. Um, how do you do what you did? 
uh, on an existing connection. So what's the deauth uh, story or how do you... Okay, so if there is an already uh, established pair, uh, devices are paired. Um, so you cannot do it at the moment because I told you that once you, the device is paired, it can no longer do anything else. So uh, I, I told the other guy that uh, there is a way to jam a, a, a communication over Bluetooth. So in that way, the communication is jammed and de-paired, and then you have to come in the middle and but do that. Like, if you've tried it, it's actually really hard uh, to, like, yeah, you can uh, broadcast noise on the spectrum, but that's pretty much all you can do, and it's not very reliable as a way to de -auth, uh, Yeah, so uh, you have some uh, limitations with Bluetooth. You also have to have the proximity and yeah. uh, so it's not that easy as it looks, but if you're already in the middle, then you can do uh, bad stuff. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? No, appar apparently not. So please give another warm round of applause for thank Tom you. Mahmoud. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>